Good afternoon. This is Mallory Sykes. I'm the director of Renew Media, and today I will be presenting uh, our third webinar of our four webinar series, Preparing for the Holiday Rush. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you enjoy. All right, so preparing for the holiday rush, we want to make sure that you have a to-do list and you're checking it twice. As you know, uh, we've decided to focus on the holiday rush topic because um, it's, it's better if you start planning as early as now, October, for the next two months. We don't want you to end up stressing during the holidays when you're so busy with everything in your store uh, to just then start trying to plan something. And we want you to fully capitalize on this period of time when consumers all have their wallets out and they're ready to spend. And if you're just joining us now, again, my name is Mallory Sykes. I'll be today's presenter. So I want you to all feel free to ask questions as we go along in your toolbar on the webinar. At any point during the presentation, you're welcome to type in a question or raise your hand. I will try to answer these questions as promptly as possible, but just so you know, we will have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. During today's webinar, we will be reviewing a few topics, including the importance of creating a holiday campaign, so really that's the why, and how to create the, the holiday campaign. And then finally, measuring your success. So why is it important to have a marketing plan for the holiday season in particular? To answer that question, we are going to review some consumer statistics about holiday shoppers. So as you can see from this chart, the average consumer planned to spend a total of $967 during the winter holidays in 2017. So although we do not have the exact figures for 2018 at this time, this next chart shows us that the National Retail Federation estimates holiday sales for 2018 will in fact increase by 4.3 to 4.8% this year from last year. So this really just tells us that consumers are feeling confident about spending this year and gift giving in general. So we definitely want to capitalize on this fact. So a few things to keep in mind during this webinar presentation is that 60% of millennials surveyed said they loved holiday shopping. And Black Friday had the highest sales rev revenue last year for 68% of retailers. So some other statistics I want to go over are 54% of holiday shoppers said that they begin researching potential purchases as early as October. 50% of shoppers said that limited time sales or promotions convinced them to actually make a purchase. Shoppers are not abandoning brick and mortar. It's a common misconception right now, but much inspiration still comes from within the store. So a lot of shoppers are actually going to to a physical store before they make their gift decisions. Finally, 25% of holiday shoppers said they were convinced to make a purchase because of a free gift item with purchase. All right, so now that we know that they're, they're, the consumers are there and ready to spend, we just need to know what are our goals, what are your goals, especially for the holiday season. We want to make sure that we're getting those people who are ready to spend into your store. So let's start by setting some attainable goals. One of those could be increasing sales in general. So I want you to look at your sales from last year and see where there is room for improvement if there is. 
Um, I want you to think about possibly just increasing brand awareness in general. Uh, this is a great time to introduce or reintroduce your brand while consumers are already out and about spending money. Next could be to just boost engagement with your target audience. So to do this, consider local advertisements or boosting ads on social media to your current target audience and really trying to get their loyalty. So, you know, in general, make sure that this campaign will ultimately develop more brand loyalty for your company. So now that you have goals, let's go ahead and talk about your budget. So we're going to go ahead and do a poll right now. I, I'm curious to see, do you have a set marketing budget for the holiday season? I'm going to give you about 15 seconds to answer this question. Okay, I think it's been about 15 seconds, so we'll go ahead and see what our results look like. Okay, it looks like the majority of attendees have answered with no, not yet. And honestly, that was kind of what I had predicted. Um, a lot of my clients uh, I've noticed will tell me, I don't have a budget, I just want to do marketing. I want this campaign to work. That's a, that's a common response. And I want you to know that the, you, as you can see on this slide, the US Small Business Administration has some recommendations as far as marketing budgets go. They recommend spending about two to 5% of actual or projected gross revenue annually on marketing. So if you're in particular looking for your holiday campaign, how much to spend, well, you can just figure out the math and uh, you know figure out the three per three to five percent from last year gross sales and then go ahead and divide that by 12 and then if you're planning a campaign from November to December just use two of those months worth um, and then you know in general a lot of my clients will even figure out oh wow I was supposed to have been spending all this time three percent on marketing so they may have an access of, of uh, funds if they do that type of math. So they may, now that it's the end of the year, have even more than three to five percent to spend in November and December to make up for what they did not spend throughout the other months of the year. And it's never a bad idea to beef up your marketing budget in November and December to really capitalize on this busy spending season. Okay, so once you have your budget in place, I want you to think about your campaign message. So to do this, I always recommend that you think smarter, not harder. And what I mean by that is be specific and clear with your message. The more specific you are, the more likely your message will be understood by your target audience. Is it measurable? If you're promoting a specific product, are you able to look at your total sales of that specific product from last year and compare it to this holiday season? You really don't want to start a, an entire campaign like this surrounded by some, some campaign that is not measurable. So, Otherwise, if, you, if it's not measurable at the end, you may, be in, you may end up frustrated because you won't actually know hard details of, did, the, did I get my return on my investment here? So we'll move on to, is it attainable? I'm always a fan of reaching for the stars, but in this situation, you need to stick with realistic, attainable campaign messages. Is it relevant? It may seem obvious, but make sure that your message really fits in line with the holiday season. If you're a restaurant, you want to make sure that your message is promoting seasonal items, maybe your hot soup or your hot coffee, but steer away from really pushing your ice cream or 
outdoor seating, for example. And without a solid plan, I see a lot of clients who, before we've actually started helping them, I'll go back to their social media, what did they do last year? And I'll realize that oftentimes they'll get an employee in the store to post on their social media and maybe they're just trying so hard to come up with content that they actually end up letting some of their most relevant products to this current season, this holiday season, slip under the radar when if they had a plan, then it, they wouldn't have, they would have focused on those specific items. So is it timely? Make sure that you know uh, when, you, when you want to actually begin your campaign and when you want to end the campaign. So for example, recently I met with a jewelry store who uh, they told me they really make quite a bit of money on last minute shoppers during the holiday season. So they really hit their target hard seven days before Christmas and end that campaign on the 25th. So for this example, I just wanna show, make sure that your campaigns begin and end during the time frame your message is most relevant. So you wouldn't wanna waste money on that last minute shopper campaign by starting it in early November. That just wouldn't make sense and you would be wasting your money. All right, so I have one more poll here. Have you ever been persuaded to make a purchase because it was advertised as a holiday special? Just want you to answer yes or no. And so as an example here, I'll give you about 15 seconds. I mean holiday specials as in gift sets or products on sale that are only available during the holiday season. All right, we'll go ahead and close that out. Okay, yes, this is probably what I, I had expected, but 100% um, of you said yes. For this reason, I am going to start with the idea of using an offer as the main message for your campaign this holiday season. So you can start with an offer like a prize, a discount, coupon, service, resource, or really anything that you can use to attract your ideal audience. Now, the next thing would be give your shoppers an incentive to return to your business. In this instance, you would maybe offer a single valuable discount to draw on bargain hunters during the holidays or plan a series of short-term promotions that change each week. So, if you're thinking, I just can't afford to offer a discount this holiday season, or that's just not how we operate, I suggest that you consider doing some kind of gift suggestion. And we're looking for, in this instance, a unique gift that may not be offered by a different business around, or maybe just bundling more than one product into a gift set. Uh, I'm a huge fan during the holidays of being able to go into a store, see suggested gift sets, and I just, I know right off the bat, oh, this, this is so great together, I never would've thought of this, I'll buy it now, because I know it won't be around in January after the holidays. So that would be a great thing to focus on for your holiday campaign, promoting it, of course, um, to your target market. Um, if you do not currently have some type of discount or sale to offer. Okay, so now that we have our message planned, we're going to select the appropriate audience. This may be a little bit more complicated during the holidays, so I want to point that out. Your target audience may change during the holidays. So you should continue to target your prime customer during the holiday season because they're most likely the ones who are asking Santa you know, for the gift that they usually uh, purchase on their own. But I want you to be aware of the affinity shopper this season. What do I mean by affinity shopper? I, you know, 
don't, I'm not going to start another poll here, but I, I'm sure most of you may not know what that means. And what I mean by that is the affinity shopper is the gift giver or the person that really falls outside of your normal target audience and is someone you need to consider targeting this season because they may be the mother of the person that really is your regular shopper. So you need to consider broadening your target this season. Okay, so now that you know about your target audience, let's talk about choosing the appropriate platforms to get your message out. So one thing I want to suggest is updating your website to have a landing page. Uh, so I think that having a landing page just designated to your campaign is a good idea because these days most consumers demand full transparency when they're shopping and they may hear about your campaign online and your promotion online, but they want to actually go to a landing page on your website and read more about it and read the details and then make their final purchase with you. So I would suggest having that. Another outlet is obviously social media. It's very popular. Um, you can use Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Yelp, or more. There's there's actually a ton these days. But I, I definitely suggest using some boosted posts during this season. Um, do some actual paid advertising through these outlets. And I do not suggest going in and creating a a Pinterest page if you've never used it just for this holiday season. Of course, I think you should have as many social media outlets as you can manage, but I don't think that you should do that just for this holiday season. I think you need to hit your returning visitors with your messages, and then I also think to uh, get more people to come to your page, that's when you would use your boosted posts. So next is eBlast. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar more with Constant Contact or MailChimp than some of the others, but those are two great services. If you currently have an email list for your business, it it's just so smart during the holidays to really target that list with your eBlast explaining this campaign. I think that it's smart to just go ahead and schedule those out with different messages as the campaign goes along. So, you know, I, I suggest making sure message changes to where at the end of your campaign, you're telling shoppers last minute gifts, um, middle of the campaign, you might wanna switch it up a little bit, but email blast is so important. Uh, it goes straight to your user's phone and it creates brand awareness and hold, hopefully leads to a purchase in the end. Next, I know this is a broad term, but digital advertising is always great for these holiday campaigns. So if you work with a company like Renew Media, uh, we can help you figure out the best outlets for digital banner ads or different type of digital ads on apps that your target market is using. We can help you really figure out how to do that. Um, it's always great for a, for a campaign like this to have an enticing message on a banner ad that your user ends up clicking on and then follows through to say that landing page I was talking about that explains your entire campaign. So one thing you could start today is blogs. So you can start as another way to explain your campaign and, and hit some more followers is to create a blog post about this campaign. Um, it would just be a little bit more detailed than say your social media sites would be about it, but I definitely recommend starting or maintaining a blog with your campaign. And last but not least, email your, write up a press release and try to go ahead and email it out to all of your local news outlets. Um, they might pick it up and run it on the news or on their, on their digital outlets. So I definitely think if you have a really clever campaign that is focused around whatever you're promoting this holiday season that it's likely it could be picked up in the news. 
All right. So now that we have some different outlets to use, I want you to keep in mind while you're where, while you're selecting your focus of those outlets that 50% of millennials said that they were influenced by social media for gift giving inspira inspirations such as Facebook, while Gen Z was most inspired by Instagram, according to the National Retail Federation. All right, so are you prepared? I mean, I, if you're listening to this webinar, I'm sure you are, are making plans for the holidays. So I just want you to be thinking about how can I best prepare myself for the holidays now that I know all that I do. So at this point, you should have chosen your goals, selected your audience, picked your campaign message, your budget, and the platforms to spread the message. So I cannot, cannot stress enough the importance of pre-planning and scheduling out your holiday campaign as, you know, as soon as today. I just want you to start thinking about that. You will thank yourself later. Over the holidays, of course, I said this before, but you can expect an influx of customers as well as many social events and family gatherings that will be sure to distract you from making the random social posts or sending e-blasts or updating your website on the fly. So definitely make a calendar plan so that you can go ahead and schedule what you can schedule and plan out exactly when your messages need to go out. Just make the e-blast now. Don't wait until the day of. Get it all set up in your calendar and you know, make a calendar for November and December and really stick to it so that you're not worrying about these campaigns as on the day of. I want you to go ahead and plan it and capitalize on these shoppers by planning. So one thing to keep in mind is that the National Retail Federation found nine in 10 shoppers said something convinced them to make a purchase that they may have been hesitant about. Of those who said they were swayed, 50% said it was due to a limited time sale or promotion or 25% free gift with purchase. So, I'm sorry, 25% said that it was due to a free gift with purchase. So I just want to point that out, make sure that you understand that these type of messages we're talking about really do sway people to come in and, and finally make a purchase with you. So now we're going to, now that our campaign is done, we want to measure our results. One way to do this is go ahead and I'm hopefully you're using Google Analytics. If you're not, you can certainly contact us and we'll help you out. But um, measuring your search marketing performance is always important because you can narrow it down to searching it for the month of November and December. So you can really see how many people searched your site or visited your site during this campaign. Now, if you created a landing page on your website, like I had suggested previously, make sure that you review the number of views that it received throughout your campaign because that page was created specifically for this campaign, so you're starting at ground zero, so you can really see how many hits it received. Okay, so measuring the effective, effectiveness of your social media marketing. So all of your major social media outlets now have built-in analytics that help you track the effectiveness of your posts and other messages that you put on them. So it's really easy to figure out was your social campaign effective and you can really use that information for the future. So last but not least, I want you to look at your sales. So if you were over the holidays promoting a specific product or service, you can compare the sales from this year's holiday season to last year's holiday season and figure out how well the campaign did from that. And 
at the end, now I want you to use all of these different things to, to figure out how to successfully market in the future. So you can use, if this was a great successful campaign, then you can use it next holiday season. Uh, but I want you to make sure that you're really paying attention to all of the results from this campaign so that you're not blindly looking at how to market the next campaign. Okay, so at this point, I just want to ask if anyone has questions. I'll just give you a few seconds here. All right, I don't see any questions at this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say thank you so much for attending this webinar. I hope you enjoyed and happy holidays. It's already here. So um, if you have any additional questions or you can't, you can think of anything at this time and you do later on, feel free to give me a call. Um, there's, you can see on the screen my email and my phone number be happy to talk to you. We do offer free consultations. So if you just have any questions about creating a campaign or the best use of you know, your different outlets this season, I'd be happy to help you out. Finally, I want to invite you to our next and final of the series uh, webinar called The Consumer Journey finding your target audience. So we spoke a little today about your target audience, but this webinar will be really focused on how to find your target audience. Do you, are you targeting currently the wrong people? So that will help you with all of your future campaigns so that you get the most bang for your buck when you're spending your marketing dollars. And that webinar will be held on Thursday, November 29th. So I want to thank you again for coming today, and everyone who attended will receive a recorded webinar. Thank you.